The explorers of old never shied away from an epic journey across the seas. They believed it to be the largest expanse they could ever hope to conquer. And yet centuries later, we've run out of land, the limits of the world. How do we satisfy our need for exploration? Why, we turn to the moon, of course. We, our team of Ryan Fogey, are going to A universal repeatable design for the lunar surface that will be mankind's first lunar colony. Utilizing a lunar lava tube as protection from radiation and from the lunar surface are basically pushing the bounds of settlement flexibility with our mon modular cast systems and can be placed in any lava tube on the lunar surface. Moreover, the modular adaptability allows us to repurpose spaces during their operational lifespan, allowing us to one day create a full network of lunar colonies across the surface of the moon. I'd now like to present Orion's tender for the foundation system. What is the Foundation Society's main goal? Space, settlement, exploration beyond the stars, profiting from land not obstructed by political or national boundaries, or mass manufacturing and agriculture production. Whatever it is, Agnes Sol can truly encapsulate all of these visions, and it does this through one simple concept, modular clarity. Now the generic design is accompanied by three revenue generating business ventures. These are research, investment, and refuge facilities. Within research, there are 20 laboratories, 10 for the foundation society, and 10 to be competitively sold off to private third party in, um, investors. Agnesol would also be open to government and private investment. Now since Agnesol would also have such an integral role in resource uh, research, the government investment would be acquired, and innovative and adaptive appeal would cause many private investors to follow. Now this is where Agnesol truly shines. Whatever you want the base to specialize in, the base is specialized in whatever you want. If there was a large deposit of valuable or discovered nearby, it can transfer it into a mining facility, or if there is a large amount of silicon, nearby. You can evolve it into a manufacturing plant for solar cells. Now how does Agnesol do this? It is through the CAS task's uh, special ability to fold and slide to make an easily adjustable room for any specialization. Not only this, but the rail system, the, the custom, but in the rail system, the custom cast can be arranged in whatever formation you want. You can make certain casts into storage facilities and place them all next to each other in the radius of refineries. The limit is your imagination. Now the generic design will take place in four major stages or phases. Phase one, design and assembly. Phase two, transport. Phase three, construction. And phase four, internal checks. Now the total initial amount to be built to the Foundation Society is 514 billion. So the total annual cost would be 632 million. But with our 10 billion revenue subtracting uh, annual costs, this would allow Agnesol to regain costs after 43 years. However, 10 years after the break-even point, uh, there would be an estimated 103 billion in profit and would only dramatically increase in time. Table 1.2.4 showcases the cost of showcases the cost load during the construction phase, and Table 1.2.5 displays the occupation of cast after use. In fact, since cast are essentially free, saving an incredible amount, this will save an incredible amount of money. Table 1.2.6 displays the estimated number of employees and contract costs during the phase of construction. And here, the Gantt chart illustrates nine years of Agnesol's fast and planned construction. Within the risk assessment, it was found that there were multitudes of opportunities. However, arguably the most important opportunity was the modular design of the casks, which are taken advantage of by introducing future business ventures, which is those mining that you saw earlier, mining, refining, manufacturing, etc. 
Now, the largest risk that we found was the many potential health hazards within Agnesol. To combat this, the airway would be kept pristine and weekly checkups would be ensured. Now, if the settlement is affected by move waves, emergency facilities would be put into place. There would also be seven million annually for an insurance against these move waves. My colleague in the structural department will continue this proposal. At the heart of Agnesol is its adaptability, provided by a modular design. The casks, originally used for shipment of materials and consumables, are reused as modular rooms. This is achieved through custom design casks with hematic seals, doors on the long face which provide access to the top and bottom, and inside walls which fold down to be supported by poles extending from the floor. These features maximise flexibility. Adaptability is further increased through a modular construction system. The casts attach to the transport tubes and slide along rails before locking into place with a mechanical locking system. They are airlock compatible and the rail long runs along the outside of the hubs and transportation tubes. The rail system allows casks to be reconfigured, replaced and moved locations with ease. The two transport tubes run parallel to each other between hubs. The hubs are 30 metres in diameter and appear every 92 metres. These hubs can be large, extending from the floor of the lava tube to the lunar surface, or small, standing at half height. The hubs are also designed with a modular and adaptable focus, with each level independent of each other and able to be included based on specialisations. Overall, the defining feature of Agnesol is its modular approach, which maximises reusability. Access to the lunar surface is provided primarily through the naturally formed and artificially modified entrance. The top of each large hub also connects to an above ground dome. These domes have lunar surface access, viewing platforms and are made from polycarbonate to reduce moonquake damage and lead glass for radiation shielding. These domes are also function as emergency exits from the lava tube. Our moonquake damage mitigation scheme utilises laminated rubber bearings, sliding seismic insulators and Shishin and Mishin shock absorbers. Together, these provide ample support. An early warning system is also used to shut down electronic and movement systems. Our dust mitigation scheme utilises a one millimetre thick superhydrophobic silico nano coating and thin transparent layer of electrodynamic dust shielding to prevent lunar dust adherence. In conjunction with acoustic levitation and electrostatic wanding for dust removal. The interior design is fully customisable and fluid to suit settlement requirements. This image provides a sample interior layout and the volumes of individual modules are shown. Agnesol's entry points and domes will be constructed first, followed by the hubs and transport tube exoskeleton, and finally the placement of casks. Agnesol is designed to have a wide variety of research capabilities. Microgravity and the lunar environment allow diverse research to take place. The research facility is located in a smaller hub to allow isolation from the settlement for safety reasons, and materials will be brought to the research facility through domed access. <coughs> um, the research facilities are also able to be easily customised through selecting these options. My colleague from the operations department shall continue. All materials that are required for the construction process will be sourced from Earth through the use of casks which will be greatly beneficial in terms of cost. These materials will then be transported from the ports to the station through a rail network. However, if it is determined in the future that there are materials on the lunar surface near the settlement site that can chiefly supplement Agnesol, mining will be utilised. As lunar dust poses a threat to the settlement if it enters the facility, electrodynamic dust shields will be placed around airlocks to prevent this. In the agricultural section of the settlement, an aquaponics system will be utilised to grow the crops for both the crews and residents. As well as this, after the construction process, food will be imported and stored as emergency supplies. To increase the efficiency of, gathering, of generating electrical power, both surface solar panels and satellites will be used and lithium sulphur batteries will be stored as a backup source of electrical power. External communications will be available through the use of a program that is to be based off one integrated by NASA called the Optical Payload for Lasercom Science. Every individual will also be provided with smart glasses for improving everyday internal communications. For efficient and simple transportation between base facilities to transport people and materials, a series of elevators will be used. Implementing the Tatian vibration control and mentioned base isolation will prevent any damage to the landing area for this spacecraft caused from potential moonquakes. The atmospheric com 
position and pressure will be managed to mimic that of the earths in order to maintain the health of the individuals living on the settlement and the use of a hydrolysis process will account for any loss in oxygen. Whilst the lava tubes will mitigate severe temperatures experienced on the lunar surface, a combination of the passive and active thermal control system will be used to ensure suitable temperatures within the settlement. Both systems incorporate radiators provided by Vulture Aviation, which will be used for heat rejection. Household waste will be managed by converting human feces into biofuel through the anaerobic digestion process, which will provide a backup source of fuel. All water used throughout the settlement will be brought up in eight um, casts per year. As seen in the diagram, water and sewerage pipes will lead to the water purification plants and sewerage management areas in the hubs. Using this table, we compared three different types of energy production that could be used in the station, ground-based solar, satellite-based solar, and a hybrid system. We implemented the hybrid solar system based on this analysis as it was found to be the most efficient and it incorporates a backup source of energy production for emergencies. From the ports, the casts will be transported on the electric light train system to one of the entrances to the settlement. On this slide is a diagram of the location of the ports, train lines and entrances. As there are three entrances, even in the case of one malfunctioning, there will be alternate ones to transport the cask and to enter the set settlement. Max from this um, human department. <laughs> human department's main concern is not only keep our people alive, it's to make them comfortable. So I will feature a variety of amenities across 15 floors in hubs 1 and 2, as indicated in the usage map above. All recreational activities and amenities are designed to create a sense of community, and mental health is our utmost concern. For example, Agnesol will feature a mess hall overseen by award-winning chefs, rather than installing individual kitchens in each room. As indicated in green, rooms are cast. With two rooms for gas, along with transportation tubes to pick up one and two. <coughs> Hence, a total of 185 tasks are required to house 350 occupants, plus, a stranded, plus any stra population stranded in those floors. The rooms are designed to accommodate one person and boast full customizability. Occupants can rearrange any furniture, any furniture and components to match a specific piece. For example, West, modern, Japanese if they fit within the rooms I mentioned above. Note that occupants must submit any desired layout plan six months prior to departure since all components are delivered from Earth. However, a notable fixed picture of the <coughs> room is the bathroom, which utilizes mist injection systems to reduce water usage by 20%. These are the projected logistics for regarding operational consumables on a yearly basis. Now, limited radiation protection is needed since most of the base is within the lava tube. However, respective radiation location is readily available, depending on system symptoms. Regarding thermal regulation, Agnol is fitted with radiators and ventilation systems, which mimic slight seasonal change to minimize environment or psychological illnesses such as depersonalization disorders. In the case of pressure variants, no facilities are equipped with decompression chamber. Now, physical conditioning is upheld with compulsory exercise schedule, the sleep rhythms are managed with an automated day and night cycle. Common health issues such as depression, slow cognitive performance, and increased agitation are dealt with medical professionals, certain recreational activities like yoga, and exposure to a natural environment. As for the protection of occupants in the external environment, spacesuits are equipped with silicon nanocoating to repel the majority of polarized regolith dust found on the surface. Despite its complicated structure, the suit can be fully equipped with a simple slip on, screw on motion. Nonetheless, inside Axinol's numerous airlock systems position at the connections between hubs, transportation tubes, and research facilities to ensure that any existing hazardous materials or dust is mitigated. <coughs> Finally, in the unlikely event of an emergency, an automated protocol is triggered, as shown in the third chart above. It's worthwhile to mention that all occupants are trained and instructed on how to respond to emergencies. David, for automation department, very well. Orion's automation members have attempted to provide increased efficiency, safety, and reliability in all aspects of Agnesol through automated systems and processes. Here is our plan. 
Construction automation. The transportation of the casks will be managed through the flowchart evident on the board. This includes the Imperium that performs transporting and unloading processes for the casks. Imperium will also be tasked with assembling the tubes and hubs before the human builders arrive. Additionally, General Bots will assist, in, assist Imperium in the construction of Agnesum. After the construction is finished, the, this robot can be assigned to general maintenance of the station or mineral mining. Occupant interfaces. Every resident at the base will be equipped with light smart glasses developed by Epson Australia. These glasses will incorporate a variety of features evident in the list above. All personnel will be required to wear their provided smart glasses when outside of their private rooms. Systems and robots throughout the base will all be running on the self-developed software, Mary. The role of the software is to monitor whether any files have been affected or whether there is a security breach within the network. The description evident here, the description evident here additionally illustrates the process of a resident accessing his or her private room and their data. Automation for safety. The station will be employing a, mag a multitude of airlocks purchased from the subcontractor, lossless airlocks. Additionally, a dust removal system will be implanted into, e into the airlocks to convert the positively charged dust into neutral charge. Following this, the dust will fall to the ground and will be sucked out through a vacuum. In the event of a fire outbreak, FHCES pr uh, process will be activated promptly, as is evident here. Smoke alarms will be implemented into each room within the station, and detectors within the smoke alarm will additionally notify the FHCS to act accordingly. After the occupants have evacuated the targeted room, the FHCS will promptly seal the room and release appropriate firefighting contents, such as CO2, water mist, and foam at the fire. The station will also employ multiple fire masks for situations where the smoke is contaminated with carbon monoxide. In regards to food consumables, one month's worth of non-perishable food is permanently stored on the station in the unlikely event that a resupply mission is disrupted or delayed. In terms of emergency material consumables, an additional 10% of the casks utilized for constructing the station are stored on each station in the event of, in the event of emergency repairs needing to be conducted. In, reg in regards to microbial contamination, the Bacteria Eliminator 1 will regularly inspect for microbiological life contained within the food of the station and similar to the Bacteria Eliminator 1, the Bacteria Eliminator 2 will inspect for microbiological life contained within the space station. Both models will additionally contain the threatening microbiological life form and dispose of it appropriate into the sludge disposal. In the event of a solar flare or windstorm, SPS will be activated promptly, directing inhabitants to the specified locations underground. This process is further elaborated on in the flowchart to the left. Additionally, the station will employ a large range of both single and multi-purpose robots to satisfy Agnesil's endeavors. These robots and their functionalities are listed toward the right of the presentation and are illustrated in figures three to four. While these systems are designed to benefit the station to a maximum extent, these are just models and therefore can be customized to the user's preference. In regards to modularity, an augmented reality system will also be implemented into the glasses, providing helpful information for the residents of Agnes. The smart glasses will additionally employ an eye recognition program for security purposes and protection of private data. Control Center. Three personnel will be monitoring each different class, observing any faults that may occur within each system. The system SimPro will be used to monitor all the resources by calculating how much resources are being used per day and then automatically adding it to the new resupply machine. The thermal control system will be used to regulate the atmosphere and in case of any failure within systems, men in the control room will take over and correct any mistakes the automated systems have made. Through automated systems and processes, Orion's automation members have attempted to provide increased efficiency, safety, and reliability in all aspects of Agnesil. User preference and modularity has also been incorporated into each element of the proposal. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Orion has provided a flexible and innovative design for your consideration tonight. A modular approach allows incredible adaptability to locations and needs on the lunar surface at any time, and our use of modules <laughs> allows the structure to perform in a completely protected and controlled environment. We believe our station provides the necessary function the Foundation Society requires in order to bring the moon to our doorstep. It's time to save the next step.